Welcome back to the last fly tying tutorial in the World Championship fly series that I'm doing for this last year. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be tying a worm pattern. Who would have thought I'd be coming back from techie water in Spain with a worm pattern for you? But um, we had a, a session the last day, or second to last day, I guess, in the fourth session, where uh, we finally had a lot of rain. The river came up, and suddenly the fish were a little bit interested in worms. So. Um, many of you may not know, a couple years ago, the, the governing body for international competitions, uh, Phipps Moosh, they ended up banning the squirmy wormy from uh, competitions. So those of us who used to use squirmies a lot have had to figure out other solutions for our worm patterns. And so I've worked on quite a few over the last couple of years and, and have a few in the rotation that have all uh, worked, you know, at, at their own time. Um, this is a pattern today called the DNA worm, uh, and you'll see once I tie it why I call it that. Uh, but it looks like a double helix by the time you end up finishing it, and hence the name DNA worm. Uh, this is a pattern that I've, I've uh, had good success with since I started tying it, and uh, it's a pretty easy pattern to tie. It's also really durable, so it's even more durable than any of the squirmy worms that you'd find. You can catch a lot of fish on it before you have any issues with it uh, falling apart. So if you have a, a fishery locally where you catch a lot of fish on worms, please give this a tie and let me know how it works because uh, one of the things I'm still interested in is how well other worm patterns stack up for folks compared to the good old squirmy worm. So I'd, I'd love to hear your feedback on, on how well this pattern works for you. So let's get tying. All right, this is an example of a finished DNA worm. And you'll see that it's got kind of that DNA double helix shape. This one happens to be done with blood red and fluorescent pink life flex. So that's how we're gonna tie uh, this fly or the materials we're gonna tie it with. And you can get that little kind of mixed two-tone effect. You could go just all blood red. You could go blood red and brown, whatever kind of mix of, of uh, colors you want for your worm. Um, I have some red thread here. This is 16 aught vivus. Doesn't have to be this thin because this is a, going to be a fairly large fly, but this is just what I have on a spool here at the desk. Um, this is a size 12 Dohiku 303, which is closer to about a 14 and other hooks. And I tie this fly uh, one size larger with all the way up to 3.8 millimeter beads and also this same hook. Uh, I don't really go smaller than this hook very often for the general length of worm. You could do this in a mini version, either with a single strand of life flex or just shorter with smaller hooks all the way down to as small a beads as you want. I do use some of these with two millimeter beads uh, for really shallow water sight fishing situations. Now, the first thing we're going to do, we've got our thread affixed to the shank and we're going to um, anchor this bead in place. So if you really wanted to do this nice and clean and not have any thread wraps showing, you could build up a little bump of thread right here, and then super glue the bead to the hook. But I'm a little more utilitarian in my tying than that, so I'm just gonna pinch the bead between my fingers. You can't see it in the camera here, but I'm coming over the top of that bead and locking a wrap down, going once, and then you can just X wrap, figure eight, basically over the top of it, and that bead is nice and locked in place now. Now I'm gonna take my Life Flex, I have 
a strand of fluorescent pink and a strand of blood red. Do a one loose wrap. I want to trim these off exactly flush with each other if they're not even already. They kind of got a little uneven when I tied them in. And then I'm just going to pull them back under that thread wrap until they're behind the bead. And then I can lock them down. It's better to do it that way than to get in there and try and trim behind the bead with your scissors because it gets in the way of getting the, the Life Flex flush. All right, I've wrapped most of the way down and even a little bit onto the curve of the shank there. And what I'm trying to do is um, not have the, the worm in, you know, locked down kind of up here because then it can foul around the hook easier as you're fishing it. The further you go down the shank, the less issues you'll have with the worm wrapping around the hook. So um, we want to minimize that. Now we're just going to take and we're going to spin these together. So spin it up pretty good. Lots of wraps, nice and tight. And take your left hand, if you're a right-handed tire, and form just a little anchor point where these can spin together. And I'm going to spin those even more so it gets a little tighter. You'll learn pretty quickly how much you need to spin it. There we go. And as you let them, if you fold that back on itself, you'll see that it just it spins nice and tight into that DNA double helix shape. This is only about a little bit longer than the hook shank. You could go out to here you know, pretty long with that tail as well if you wanted to make it a little larger. Okay, I'm just going to do one or two twists of them together as I wrap forward because I want both colors to show. If you don't twist, sometimes one color will, like it's kind of doing right now, the pink is, is uh, covering up all the red wraps. So you can twist them together if you want to keep that multicolored effect in there. Yeah, I got mostly pink showing, but that's all right. Lock it down behind the bead, then advance your thread over the bead again. Just make sure you have a few wraps of thread on the hook so things don't slide around. And then I just pull the, the material over the top. And do the same thing. We're going to twist those um, strands together and just pinch them at a point. If you don't like the way they've rolled on each other, roll a little more and you can kind of just, um, you can, if you pull on the, the strand in your left hand here, it'll either curve or straighten out the, the the doubled over strand. So keep that in mind if you want to have really not any tension right there, because if you have tension, it'll, it will make it so it's not straight. And you can see I left that front one a little longer than the rear. Um, normally I probably do it the opposite, make the rear one about as long as that and the front one a little shorter. But now we have a total length that's about what I wanted. And I'm just going to put a few wraps to lock those tags down that I trimmed off there. Put a little bit of super glue on the thread. A few turn whip finish and trim it off. And that is the finished DNA worm. Um, this fly has, uh, you know, it was important in my fourth session at the World Championship this last year. But I've also had success with it uh, around the West, and I just came back from Argentina and Patagonia, and I caught quite a few fish on this pattern as well. Uh, so give it a, a whip up and let me know how it works, because I'm always curious to hear uh, how different worm patterns work on other, other folks' local waters as well. Happy tying! Thanks for watching this Tactical Fly Fisher fly tying tutorial. And if you need any of the materials for this fly, you'll find them in the fly pattern category, uh, the tutorial patterns on our website. Uh, you can also check the blog where we'll have the recipe with direct links to each of the materials. Um, and then come on over to tacticalflyfisher.com for anything else you need. 
for your on the water or at the vice time. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already, and then hit that bell icon. And each time we post a video, you'll get a notification on your phone. So thanks. We really have enjoyed um, interacting with a lot of you over the last year and, and all the support that we've had both on the channel, but also in our store, especially. Uh, we thank you for your business. We hope that you're all having a good winter of fly fishing or fly tying and that you're looking forward to the spring season of hopefully some even happier trout and a few hatches around too. So thanks again, and we'll catch you in the next video.